it's personal, really. It's it's what you want to accomplish. Like I said, I told my sensei that I, when I graduated, I want to come back and I want to go to the Olympics. Welcome to Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio, episode 149, and thank you for joining us. On today's episode, we hear from world champion karate fighter and Olympic hopeful, Sensei Cheryl Murphy. At Whistlekick, we make the world's best sparring gear, and here on Martial Arts Radio, we bring you the best podcast on the traditional martial arts twice a week. Welcome. My name's Jeremy Lesniak, and I'm your host for the show, as well as the founder of Whistlekick Sparring Gear and Apparel. Thank you to the returning listeners, and welcome to those of you checking us out. I hope you enjoy your time here. You've likely heard me talk a lot about our sparring gear in the past, but how about the other stuff we have in the store? Lots of apparel, some accessories. So head on over there and check us out. See all the great stuff we've got, whistlekick.com. If you want the show notes, you can find those at whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. That's also the easiest place to sign up for our newsletter. In each of the issues, we send out special content, and it's the only place to find out about upcoming guests for the show. As a thank you, we'll send you our top 10 tips for martial artists, an exclusive podcast episode. We've heard from a number of martial artists who enjoy competing on this show, and some of them compete at a very high level. Sensei Murphy, however, is someone you may see at the Olympics in 2020, which would be a first for our guests. As a competitive kumite fighter, Sensei Murphy travels the world sparring. She has numerous national and world titles to her name, and it was an honor to speak with her. We learn why competing is so important, why she's still passionate about martial arts, and how her mom has been such a strong influence on her life. Enjoy. Sensei Murphy, welcome to Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio. Oh, I thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Hey, I appreciate you being here. And you were referred to us by a past guest, Renchi Lisa Magira. So thank you, Renchi Lisa, for connecting us and looking forward to talking to you and learning about you and hearing your stories. Absolutely. Absolutely. This is great. I'm excited and very thankful to her. Awesome. So why don't you give us an idea of how you got started in the martial arts, you know, the when, the why, the how, you know, that'll give us some context for who you are and give us an opportunity to move forward and and find out why you are the way you are. Excellent. Excellent. So um, my mom, it was just she and I, so she pretty much had me in everything she can name um, in order to keep me really, really busy. So one of the things she started off me um, was in dance. And then she had to put me in an after school program because, again, it was just her. So by the time she would get home, of course, I'd be done by with school. So um, I was at the YMCA. She put me in gymnastics. Um, and then there happened to be a karate program that was also there. So um, by the time I was about six years old, she put me into karate and um I met my instructor um, up until this particular day, um, Shehan Herb Wiles. Um, and then that's how I pretty much got started with karate. <laughs> okay. So, you know, it's clear that the the inspiration, if you will, to get started came from your mother. But Absolutely. you've stuck with it. So something, you found something, and usually people find something early on that really resonates with them. What was that for you? Um, for me, it was really the consistency. I think I needed some structure as I am, you know, 38. Now I can look back and go, yeah, I was looking for that structure. I definitely had a bit of a chip on my shoulder, still trying to figure out where that came from up until this day, but I did. Um, and you know, it was definitely a, um, guiding light for me. It was something for me to always go to. There was a sense of um, belonging. There was a sense of, you know, friendship and family. We pretty much did everything together. There was always something to do. Um, and then after, you know, just that part of it, then it became the competing. So, um, and that was definitely another thing. Every weekend, you know, we had some a Sunday to go to and cheering everybody on. So um, that's what I feel just looking back what was, uh, definitely, um, it definitely drew me to stay. Were you competitive with other sports or or things before martial arts? Not competitive. It was like I said, my mother had me in everything. So I was in gymnastics. So I always had something to do. I was in dance, did not compete in it, but definitely did, uh, shows with, um, with dancing. That was, you know, pretty much it was between, 
um, karate and dance, uh, you know, for most of my life. And then I was in piano and drums and started adding stuff like that, did shows, but not competing. No. Okay. All right. And of course you've stuck with it from, from whenever that, that point was, you know, for, for a little while, yeah. if you're, if you're 38 now, that's at least 20 years. So. Yeah, I would say more than that, but yes. <laughs> um, so 13 is when I first competed. Um, my sensei actually told me, he's like, just go, because I was very nervous, of course. Just go, try it out. You'll see, you know, and if you don't like it, then you don't do it. If you, you know, you like it, then you just, you know, you see it. But I have a feeling, speaking as him, I have a feeling you're going to go and you're going to say I should have competed that day. And I hate to say that he was right. Uh, I was like, oh, I could do this, right? So ever since then, it's just been what I did and 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 competed and you know did very well considering. <laughs> okay. So. All right, great. So that gives us some context, and we'll move forward. And I'm sure we'll, we'll loop back around and talk some more about your upbringing as we okay. move through other questions and and hear your. Am stories. I answering it okay? Or Abs absolutely, there there oh, is just... no wrong way to do this. <laughs> Right. Okay. <laughs> it's, not, it's not a kata. If you want to start at the beginning, if right. you want to start I'm at the like, end, wait, right? Like there's right. <laughs> we we don't we don't have anybody. There's no um you know, Funakoshi's not looking down at us saying that we are not oh, doing geez. this interview right. Please don't. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Now yep. I know you've listened to at least one of the other episodes and, and past listeners know that, you know, I love stories and that's really why we started this show. Why I started this show was because I just love hearing the stories that martial artists tell. Mm -hmm. You've been training for a while. I'm sure you've got a bunch of stories. If somebody was going to pin you down and say, what's your best one? What would that be? Honest. I mean, I, oof, there, there, there are too many. Um, I have a story um, just, I mean, just in the story I was explaining when my sensei, you know, told me that, um, uh, I would regret it. And I'm like, yeah, right. You know, I'm like 13 years old, you know, I'm like, yeah, okay, whatever. Um, and then I'm like, okay, great. And I have to tell my sensei that he's right. And I definitely should have, um, there's a time where, um, we were all going, <laughs> this is a good one. Okay. So. We, we used to go on trips um, every year to a ski resort, and we would go skiing. That would be one of the trips that we would do as a, as a school. And this is my first time really skiing, so I don't know exactly, you know, how to do this. So they had, like, this, you know, little mini um, uh, class before you actually go up in the hills and come down. So, okay, you learn how to stop. You learn how to, like, you know, um, to turn, those different kind of things, those basics. So we go up, we go down, we go up, we go down. It's like, you know, consistently just, you know, um, coming up and down the hill. And this one time, Sensei was like, all right, we have one more time to go. Like the bus was like, no, we have to go right now. But Sensei was like, no, we're going to do this one more time. So you have to make sure you, we go, you know, up in the lift. As soon as you get to the top of the hill, you have to come straight down. We're going to come straight down. We're going to go into the lodge. And then we're going to, you know, take our stuff off and go on the bus. Okay, great. Fantastic. So that's exactly what happened. Like we go up to the lift. Um, first person goes down. Second person goes down. Everything is great. Here I am, the last person. I come down and I literally ski right into the lodge. The door just happened to be open. It was one of those seriously like one of those cartoon flicks. Like I literally skied right into the lodge and then fell. And um, everybody could not stop laughing because of it because it was just so like. Like, what did she just do? Like, if the door wasn't open, I would have skied right into the door. So um, those are one of the, like, you know, stories that I consistently remember and, and love the fact that um, I got to experience that and, be again, be part of a team, be part of a family. It's a story that we talk about up until this day. Um, we, I just went to lunch with my sensei and his girlfriend for his birthday, 70th birthday, mind you. Um, and that was one of the stories that he ended up telling her um, as we're sitting there eating lunch. So, um, that's one of the, the many stories I have, uh, coming up and, and enjoying those karate moments. Sure. That's fun. And, and, you know, the way you told, it, I can totally visualize that. And I grew up in the, <laughs> in the Northeast, you know, I grew up in Maine and skiing and spending time on the mountains so I can totally see 
what you're talking about. Yeah, usually the snow runs right up to those doors. <laughs> right, and that's exactly what happens. And I tried the whole A thing to stop. I tried the day that it wasn't working. <laughs> it did not work at all. <laughs> but it was it was one of the, you know, again, one of the the great moments of um just being being a part of a of a great um of a great school and um so no regrets. <laughs> no regrets. <laughs> I want to talk about that for a second kind of kind of go off script here. Because what you're talking about, you know, right there in in that moment, it's it's a martial arts story, but it's not, right? You know, it's a, right. it's about well, a martial yeah. artist with martial arts people, but it's different in that you're not doing martial arts in that story, right? And the majority of schools, at least that I am familiar with, do not do organized non martial arts. Outs. Really? Yeah. Oh wow. Now maybe well, maybe, maybe it's yeah. it's bigger in certain areas. Right. But I know, and and you know, listeners, if you think I'm way off base, by all means, write in because you know I'm I'm working from the, you know, the dozens of schools that I'm familiar with. The majority of them are in New England. So I'd like you to talk for a moment about what those non martial arts events do for the the family that is a martial arts school. You know, build, building Honestly, those relationships and, and whatnot. Yeah, they're pretty amazing. Like, I'm still, I just went to a, to a movie with one of the parents that um, their kid uh, was part of the school, who then herself became part of the school. Um, I still have these relationships that are honestly are needed for me at this point. My mother passed away about eight years ago. So having those those relationships and friendships that, I mean, they're life-changing, they're life-sustaining. Um, I needed to go to a um, uh, uh, the airport, and one of the families, again, that I was, I was able to be a part of, and when they came to the school, their kids got really, really good and was able to compete and went to Pan American Championships, and I was able to be there and see them do well. Like, I, I needed to, you know, to park by her, you know, her house and stay by her house so I can just get to the airport because it was so early. And I mean, we, like, we're really close, but, you know, we, we're really close, but we have lives, so we don't speak too often. And I could have, I mean, it could have been a year. I could have been like, I need. And she'd be like, okay, no problem. Like, it, without even a, a hesitation. Um, she was the one who did um, the obituary for my mom and made the pamphlets. And, you know, so it, these relationships, um, are, like I said, are just life sustaining. And I think just build that, that safe place. I mean, we spoke like, you know, off before, uh, we actually, you know, came on and started the show. And, and I was just basically saying that, you know, um, it, you know, this is like, you know, this is family. This is, these are the things that, you know, what would I do, you know, without, without having, um, this, this, this outlet. So, um, it's just one of those things that I mean, I can't even describe it again. It was just me and my mom and these were my sisters and brothers and my aunts and uncles and cousins and, you know, stepfathers and, you know, it's just all these different things that just come to play. And, and it's just, I mean, words can't express what it means to, to, to have that coming up, um, up until this day. So, Yeah. I completely agree. And, you know, I have had some experiences, uh, despite, you know, my saying that it's it's not the norm for these type of events. But the right. reason that I bring it up is because I want listeners to recognize that there's opportunity there, you know, especially for a school owner, school owners that do kind of theme non-martial arts things, you know, like tie-ins with Star Wars have been pretty yes. big. You know, yeah. and, and it's a way that we can, as martial artists, differentiate our offerings from other sports yes. and bring more people in and keep them in longer. And that's absolutely, you know, that's one of the, the recurring themes of this show is that the more people we bring into the martial arts, the longer we keep them, the better the world is. Absolutely. I so. totally agree with that. Yeah, I totally agree. Cool. Other than martial arts, what are you interested in? Do you have any other hobbies? Um, like I said, like dance and, and, um, 
karate was pretty much what I did when I came up. Uh, I haven't had the time really to get back into dancing, especially since um, karate kind of took off for me. I was able to make the team, so training, working, um, traveling in order to compete pretty much uh, took over a lot of uh, my time. And every so often I was, I was able at one point to, you know, just dip into dance every so often. I just haven't been able to get into it as of late. I keep looking, you know, for classes and um, on my Facebook page, you'll see me consistently put like different kind of dance um, on, on my pages. But uh, for the most part, that's really what I uh, got into um, was, you know, dance. So that's the other thing that I love to do. Sure. So let's, let's, uh, move on and, and talk about competition for a minute. Cause that's come up in the last three questions that I've asked you. <laughs> right. <laughs> and it's clear yeah. that competition is a big piece of not just your martial arts, but your life. Yeah. And different people have different ideas of what a competitive martial artist might look like because, you know, whether you're talking about Olympic WTF Taekwondo, or you're talking about, you know, well, karate, WKF, the Olympic, karate, the 20s, right. So. Yep. You know? mm -hmm. so there's yeah. a lot of different aspects to this. Tell us what it is you compete in, uh, why, and what your training looks like for that. Okay. Um, so I compete um, in sports karate, right? Um, so at one point when I first started, it was a lot of different open style um, uh, types of tournaments. And at one point, traditional kind of split. So you have really traditional and you have um, – uh, open style karate. Mm -hmm. Uh, so the avenue that I took was at one point was the AAU. Um, and then you had the USA KF, then you had the USA NKF and that leads into, um, Pan American championships, the PKF, Pan, Amer Pan American Karate Federation, and then leads to the WKF, the world karate federation, um, which, at one point was really um, maybe four to five styles that was the prominent. Uh, we've just recently been um, uh, included in the 2020 Olympics. So now it's, we're trying to really broaden um, that up. Uh, so that's really what I, you know, pretty much do. I've been in that, the national karate um, team for about 15 years or so. <laughs> uh, I started a little bit late, I went to college then came back and then told my sensei, even before the Olympics were there, that I wanted to go to the Olympics. Uh, and ever since then, um, I've done everything I can to, to be a part of the team, to be on the team. Um, and it has able, and I have been able to sustain it <laughs> for this long. Um, so training, um, that's a lot. Uh, so I would do karate maybe uh, four or five times a week. Um, and then I would do um, supplemental uh, training as well. So I would go to the track, speed and agility. Um, I would go to the gym, do, um, you know, some weightlifting. Um, so it would just kind of depend on what the the day was. Um, but I, at times I would train about two times a day. And in later years would have one day of rest. But as I was coming up from the time I was maybe 22 to 30, 33, um, I would well, probably be about 30, I would be training every day. So it really does depend on what's coming up, what um, uh, tournament is coming, how important the tor tournament is to me. Um, and this is just the timing as well. Because then, you know, for me, I live in New York, so winter can be a little bit more difficult. So you have to work around certain weather constrictions or, um, again, dates of tournaments, what's coming up as opposed to uh, um, world events, Pan American events, or national events. So it just depends, even state events. So it just depends on um, the timing sure. of where the training comes into play. How many times throughout a year would you say you're competing? Ooh, um, okay, so the last couple of years, it's actually slowed down. But even last year, um, I competed um, in maybe four to five events, and that's really a slow year. Um, <laughs> I've competed maybe eight, nine times, um, uh, maybe four times, four or five times state level, um, maybe three or four times national level, depending on if I was, um, going to another state to, to compete. And then it'd be maybe three times international. 
So it just depends on, again, what year it was, um, what events, you know, everybody was going to, what events we had to go to. Um, so it can, it can really range from five to 10, if not more than that, if you really have the ability to, to travel like that. Yeah. Yeah. So the big question, why? I mean, this is, this is why? a big part of your life. It's a lot of no, time. It is. I mean, we're talking it is. It dozens is. of hours throughout a month and money and, and unless you've, you've, uh, you know, won the lottery or, or somehow, right. you know, yeah, found, found a, a pot of gold. I mean, we right. don't have the sponsorships. We don't, we don't have the money coming yeah. back out for, for people to focus on this full time professionally. Yeah. So why? Th- there's gotta be, a, there's gotta be a big why in there. Yeah. It's personal, really. It's, it's what you want to accomplish. Like I said, I told my sensei that I went after, after I graduated, um, I want to come back and I want to go to the Olympics. Um, and that was, that was my main thing. Then I wanted to be national champion. Then I wanted to be Pan American champion. Then I wanted to be world champion. Like, and then those consistent goals and I wanted to do it again. And then I wanted to, oh, I did it last year. Well, I want to, you know, do it, you know, again. If I can do it one the first time, then I can do it two, three, four more times. So it becomes a personal um, goal, a, a personal drive um, that that I want to accomplish. Um, just like within, you know, if if you, you know, if you're working, um, if there are certain things you want to um, uh, you want to get to, um, you may be, you know, in, in my particular job right now, you have assistant director, you have managing director, you have center director, then you have ops manager, and then you and there's all these different things. So just depending on where you are, you have your own certain goals. Um, and those were mine. Um, I wanted to be the best. I wanted to be the absolute best. So um, and that's what was my my drive, regardless of the struggle, regardless of what had to be um, sacrificed. It was just not even a choice, honestly. It was like, okay, what do I need to do in order for this to happen? Okay, what do I need to do in order for this to happen? Consistent questions of, of of um, what the next goal was going to be. And that could be getting to a training. Um, if somebody I wanted to train with was two hours away, what do I need to do in order to get there? Um, if I had somebody who was training in another state, if I had to go to another country, what do I need to do in order for me to get there? What do I need to do in order for me to win at this tournament? What do I need to do in order for that not to happen again if I lost the last tournament? You know, so it's just always what is the next thing um, and what do I need to do in order to get there? So, sure. So let's talk about the Olympics because you've mentioned yep. that a couple of times and, and it sounds <laughs> yeah. like that that's, you know, that's the big carrot that's driving you at this point. Am I right? I mean, yeah, I mean, I am, is still in question about that. It's just, I'm 38 years old. Like again, life tends to, um, definitely take a toll on those questions of whether I can get there or is it worth it at this point. So for me, however I am involved, yes, I want to be at the Olympics when my sport gets to show itself off. Um, I would love it, whether that's being an athlete, whether that's being a coach, whether I'm just in the sidelines cheering on my teammates, you know, regardless of whether I'm officially on or not, I want to be some, somehow involved in, in showing why my sport is the best um and how we are athletes as as if any other athlete um uh who who also pro- you know is promoted in in the olympics right. so yeah i think it's you know great it's an exciting moment for karate i think it's um i mean just think of, i can't even you know put it into words i'm just excited just to think about it of course you know if in the ideal situation if i if i find that that drive to okay what can I do and is it worth it to do then absolutely I would love to be on the mat or doing everything possible to be able to get on the mat at the Olympics absolutely right now I I have no definite answer to to that but absolutely why not why wouldn't I um but it would just take some time to kind of figure those things out sure sure well I I hope you do. Um, I mean, you made a you made an age comment in there, and we're the, we're the same age. So I'm <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm gonna live vicariously through you, and and hope, and and hope that that you go out there and you can, you know, show the young folks what's up. 
I appreciate it. <laughs> all right. Let's switch gears a little bit. Okay. Life's hard, right? We all, we all go through stuff. Yeah. I'd like you to think of a time where life got hard and tell us how your martial arts training helped you get past it. Ooh. Um, my mom passing was definitely a hard, a hard time. And what made it even more interesting was the fact that not until six months later, was it then hard? Because I mean, there's been time like me again, it was just me and my mother. So I would travel a lot. Like if I would travel to a tournament or I would travel to go see other families. So she would go travel and sometimes I wouldn't be able to necessarily get to her. Um, so there was been times that I wasn't always able to just, you know, be able to reach out and be like, mom, at the same time, there were times where that was all like, that was the person that my go-to. I was like, mom. So that point where I could not go to her was a definite wake up call. So again, the question comes in, what do I now need to do? in order to get through what I'm getting through right now. Um, and those questions through life are always going to happen. Like I was just talking about the tournament um, or what needs to be, you know, what needs to happen for me to you know, be at my best. But what do you need to do? What do you need to do? What do you need to do? So being able to pull myself up from my bootstraps and still having, of course, you have your support system in order to really um, thrive from, but it's never my mom. Right. So, um, just being able to pull myself up in those times where things did get tough, or I didn't know exactly what to do, um, or you know, questioning what what to do next, or um, you know, life life choices that I would always go to her for. And regardless of whether I went with what she said, I always knew I had that safety net. So, karate for me has has given me one other resources to kind of go to. So I would always have my instructor to go to and, and kind of bounce things off of, or like the moms and the, the brothers and the cousins that I just mentioned, I always had that resource to, to go to and then being able to just make that decision on my own. Cause I was also a, you know, a, a single, um, uh, a single child. Right. So being able to just make those decisions. So, um, like I said, karate just gave me those resources, it gave me that that grit because um, everything isn't always going to work your way. So you have to be able to make those changes um, and just always what is going to what is next? What do you need to do in order to accomplish what you are trying to accomplish at this point? Um, and that's what karate really did. It just it just gave me that grit, that that mindset on, you know, having to fight through, having to tough um you know, really, you know, be tough through, um, making those adjustments, uh, and then utilizing the resources that I would never have had if my mom did not put me into karate. So. Did she ever have a chance to watch you compete? Oh yeah. She, my mother, <laughs> my mom would definitely cheer for me, but she'd be cheering for everybody else too. And if they did anybody else wrong, then my mom would be the first, first person screaming at the top of her lungs like why did you do that that's not right so you know um yes I remember one time my mom and this is her like sticking up for me and a typical thing for my mom you knew things got serious because she always had long nails you know things got serious when her glasses was on the tip of her to uh tip of her nose that one like she had <laughs> that one index finger would come out and she would look at you over her glasses and that, you know, that index finger would be shaking at you. And I remember she walked to one of the instructors, actually it was the tournament promoter. So I forget exactly what happened, but I know she wasn't happy. And she doesn't necessarily, you know, she's not that aggressive with certain things, but so I knew there was a problem. I walked away. I was like, I'm not even going to be in this. That like my mother just, you know, talks to because it would be no trying to con like mine and worry about it. She was on her mission and I was out. So I went about my way. And I'm looking from a distance, like, what happened? And that's exactly what happened. The glasses were at the tip of her nose. She was looking at this um, tournament promoter with her finger out. And all she does was shaking. And I was just like, oh, geez. So, yeah, she was the best. She would always, she'd be the one to take me to tournaments or, 
you know, give people rides. And she was a backstage mom for dancing. So, yeah, she was able to see me compete. And she was able to see me compete internationally, which I was definitely grateful for before she passed. Um, that Because she was go to nationals and she was seeing me at state tournaments. But for me, for her to see me fight like other countries, that, you know, really is a testament, right, to, to how good you are and how well you do and, and what you really, um, like I said, it's a good testament to test you um, at the world level. And she was able to see me that and I was able to, um, to place too. I had a good showing, um, but getting that medal definitely um, was the it, I guess yeah. you can say. And I was, you know, very grateful for that. I don't care who you are. I don't care what your rank is. I don't care how nasty in the street you can be. An angry mom right. <laughs> is probably the scariest right. thing any martial artist will right. ever experience. Right. I mean, That's I, right. They're, they're, That's right. I, you know, I, I've I've refereed off and on for you know most of my my martial arts career at least the time as a black belt and. I don't notice instructors on the side unhappy while, you know, people are competing. But if there's a mom who's unhappy right. with a score, I can't tune that out. Right. You can't. Not at all. And maybe Not it's because, you know, I grew up, you know, being conditioned that I couldn't tune my mom out. Right. Right. It's That's right. something. And it's something yeah. I think for all of us. So. Yes. This, I mean, it was absolutely, and he handled it very well. Like, it, and that, that's what really, I was like, wow. Cause he was just like, yes, yes, yes. Uh, and this is like, a, and he's a, you know, um, uh, he was a black or is a black belt too. So he's been in it for like by then probably 30 years. So, um, so he, I'm sure it wasn't the first person or first mom that ever came to him, but I knew I was out. I wasn't dealing with it. So it was pretty cool to see, you know, and that's what, you know, she was my backing. So again, like not having that and being able to have to kind of maneuver through through life and regardless of whether you have somebody's back or not to be able to stick up for yourself and not to see others. That's definitely what karate did for me. Um, and like I said, for this long, I've been doing it at least 30 years, 32 years with the same instructor. Um, so it's been very, yeah, I don't know what I would have done without karate to tell you the truth. So <laughs> Now we've we've heard about the love for your instructor. We've heard about the love for your martial arts family, the people in your dojo. Yep. Now let's let's take your instructor out of the mix because I, you know, it's it's pretty clear, and I think we all understand how influential, how important that first person that shows us how to punch and kick is in our yes. life. But if yes. you had to pick somebody else, or you know, a couple people, who else really had a lot of influence? on your martial arts career? Honestly, um, uh, I mean, there's been so many people who have, who have been so influential and, and I know, and I, and I said this to you before, I'm probably gonna get in trouble, but there's been specific people that have been consistent, haven't been in and out, wasn't in, you know, wasn't there for a time period. And then, you know, for whatever reason may have left, um, or parted ways, but there's been consistency um, you know, besides again, my, my dojo, um, my dojo family, um, I've trained at, I mean, I can't even begin to tell you how many, you know, dojos I've trained with, but the people who have been consistent up until this day have been, um, since they Baxter's dojo in Mount Vernon and I would always train with Robert. Um, and he's been like, and I, I'm pretty much annoying to him at this point. I know that, but I'm so grateful to him. To, to take out the time because he works early. He, he'll he work out on his own and then he'll come to the dojo and teach at the dojo and he'll stay an extra hour or so after just so because of my schedule or the dojo schedule and I need to train, he's there. Um, and then I'll have, and how I was able to meet um, the next two people was through them and that's the Pinto brothers and that's Antonio and Leo. Um, I With them, it was such a consistency and that's when it was consistent when I was winning. Um, so, so grateful to them as well. Um, I've been to other dojos. Edwin, um, I've been able to train with. I mean, there's so many people. I can't even. <laughs> um, I, you know, Cynthia Guerrero, too, has definitely helped me out as well. But like I said, at the very beginning, from when I came to after college um, and then 
the people who really stay consistent throughout were those people that I just mentioned. Um, so I'm you know, extremely grateful to them and for them um, and really wouldn't have been able to accomplish a lot of um, what I've been able to accomplish. And there's been ups and downs. We haven't always agreed. We haven't always been on the same page. But when things kind of died down and I would go to them, I'm like, I really need um, you know, to train. Um, and then they would be like, okay, let's go. What do you want to accomplish? That's the same thing. What do you want to accomplish? What needs to happen in order for us to get there? Okay, let's do it. Yeah. Um, so that it's been very, very grateful. Very grateful. For them. Awesome. Now, if you could train with someone that you haven't yet, and, and we'll open uh, it up, you know, anybody from history too, you know, even if they've passed on, who would you right. want to train with and why? Um... And that's that's an interesting question because I honestly, like I said, I've been blessed <laughs> to have been to have trained with the best. Um, I mean, we have world champions um, in the United States that I've been able to to train with. I've been able to train with uh, so many athletes across the world that I never would have thought. I mean, again, world champions that I you know have aspired to be with. Who I have not really been able to train with is the um, the French team. I have not been able to really get through their their um, their coaches. Um, I would I would love to just be able to pick their brain. Um, uh, and why I know the, one in particular. Them? I I can't how they how they work how they um, produce what they their relationships with their, with their, um, with their team is just as, um, is just, it's just familiar because I went to the, with the Egyptians and I consistently use the Egyptian team and how they work and how they produce consistently when I speak to people as to what I feel USA sh- needs to strive for. Um, and I see this, the same thing. And again, the, the outcome. So just how the the coaches relate to their athletes, how the athletes relate to the coaches, um, and then and you know the the training that you see you see things on YouTube and and Facebook, and of course that does not give it um, the reality of what is just to be in that moment. So just to see how how they really relate and what they do. Um, I mean everybody can kick, everybody can punch, everybody can you know do sweeps and takedowns and how they get across to their athletes to then produce what they just were able to, to practice. I would love to see um, how that is actually um, brought about. Uh, I just like how they, how they present, uh, uh, present themselves. I like um, how uh, they work um, and it would just be an honor um, specifically, uh, Boudre, Boudre, uh, sorry, Baudry. Um I, I actually was able to to meet with him. There was a Goodwill Games that USA got invited to, and I was able to compete for the Goodwill. I saw him compete as well, and I'm like, oh, you know, I always thought he was a great fighter, but then now to see him as 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 he's coaching, and again, seeing how the athletes respond to him, seeing how the athletes um, uh, produce, and it's not always a win. You know, it really isn't. It's not even so much winning or even getting the medal, even though, of course, the end result is that of, of anybody who's really competing. But it's it's what they do on the mat and how they do the to do it on the mat. Their energy. Um, I would love to go and just be around that. That would be um, amazing. Right on. Let's talk about movies. Are you a fan oh. of martial arts movies? Let me tell you, I am pretty, <laughs> I am pretty, uh, yeah, especially 80s. Like, and it, it, just, it just came up with um, okay. showing up and Bruce Leroy. Um, of course, now, as it's, I am thinking about it, I cannot remember <laughs> the name of the movie. It had shown up at Bruce Leroy. Um, the Last Dragon. Last Dragon. Thank you very Time much. Time at and Yes. And he's thank been you, on the thank show. You, thank you. I had, oh, I had the so chance jealous. to talk to him. Yeah, yeah. I'll drop the link uh, in the show notes. Probably a good time to mention. Uh, if you're new to the show, if this is your first time listening, we have show notes over at whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. And so, you know, when we talk about things that would make sense to, you know, show you a web page of, we drop all the links in there so you can check that out. Yeah, I forget what episode awesome. it was, but uh, really, really fun guy. Nice guy. Yeah, I would. And I actually got to 
see him at a tournament. He was refereeing, and I just, like, for some reason, I think we were supposed to be in that ring, and then we were moved. And I was like, oh. no! Yeah. yeah. So, um, but yeah, that would, that would be, that's, like, pretty much, like, a high-ranking flick for me. Um, it, man, I would, and I'm, like, Saturday mornings, or Saturday afternoon, excuse me, because I had dance in school a Saturday morning. So, when Kung Fu would be out every Saturday on Fox 5, uh, Fox Five, I believe it was like 1 p.m. or something like that, me and my mother would always watch. So definitely hooked on that. All the 80s films, whether it was Jeff Speakman, Steven Seagal, Dan Dam, um, even um, Karate Kid, excuse me. Um, so I was definitely into a lot of the... Um, uh, martial arts movies, um, and I forget, I just thought about another one, but, uh, oh, you know, Bruce Lee with Chuck Norris, like, all those, all those types of movies, me and my mo- mom were definitely uh, chick flicks for that, like, that was just definitely a thing for us, so, amazing. Did your mother do martial arts? No, mm She, I mean, she was always into sports when she was coming up. Um, And then, like I said, um, she just wanted me to be a more well-rounded person. So she just had me in anything and everything that I can get into. Um, So, but she wasn't, I don't think she took class. She didn't even take class maybe one or two times. And she was like, no, this is not for me. Um, So, uh, yeah. So not not really. She lived vicariously through me. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, I've I've known plenty of people that weren't interested in in martial arts, but you know, obviously with her ties to you and, and interest in the movies, that just surprised me a little bit, but right. Exactly. But yeah, yeah, she was definitely, and she'd be the first person. Okay. Let's go and watch. Oh, look, this is on like, you know, so definitely. All right. Now throughout today, we've, we've heard a lot about how important competition is to you and, mm-hmm. you know, whether or not you're going to pursue Japan in 2020, which you know, so exciting. Just even mm-hmm. that we have another martial art in the Olympics. I mean, if it was That's up right. to me, it would just be, you know, we'd have jujitsu and we'd have judo and we'd have right. wrestling and we'd have boxing. and the combat and sports karate. like it track just, and field. Yeah. 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 Yep. It, it would be awesome. And, you know, maybe we could have like a, a, a decathlon of martial arts. That'd be fantastic. Mm-hmm. Who's the right. most well-rounded, right? right? That'd be That's great. right. That's right. But you're still That's actively totally. training. You're still actively competing. So there's got to be something out there. There's something that you're you're working towards, some kind of goal, something that's keeping you moving forward. Talk to us. I about mean, that. The, yeah, the biggest thing for me was getting that world championship individual medal. Um, I've been blessed and lucky enough um, to have had made history twice. Um, the female team, uh, the U.S. female team, was able to medal. Um, and I always get these dates mixed up. But 2010, I'm told you I'm not a I'm not a history buff. So even me being a part of it. Uh so 2010, we were able to get a bronze medal for um uh women's team Kumite fighting. Mm-hmm. And then we were able to do it again on this past world championships, um, uh and, and got a bronze medal. So uh I've been able to you know, make history in that respect. And I'm a big believer in making your own history, not to live um, uh, behind someone else, if that makes any sense. I know a lot of people ask me, like, who, you know, do you look to and who do you? And I don't necessarily look at it like that. I feel um, everybody has their own journey. Everybody has their own uh, goals and accomplishments. And yeah, you may want to, let's say somebody has a certain record, you may want to beat that record, but um, it, it, I wouldn't say to live, you know, to look up to, because that just means that you're not as high as, and um, as I look at it. So I just believe in making your own journey, making your own history. So in that respect, yes, I've, you know, been able to do that, but that individual world medal is, is driving me nuts. I have yet to be able to um, break that. Now I have done world events and been able to medal. Um, I've done, you know, uh, all different kinds of events all over the world and I've been able to do very well for myself. It's just that one tournament and that one aspect of it that is a big hurdle for me. So, 
um, that's what has been driving driving me um, these these last few years, um, especially again being at the age that I am. That's just been driving me nuts because I I'm not used to not at least accomplishing my goal. Maybe it's not exactly where, of course, you want that gold, but um, I've always been able to just, you know, I've been able to accomplish. So um, that's just been driving me nuts <laughs> for the last few years. So, um, and that's where my question and conflict comes into play, to be honest, to whether I should or shouldn't. Um, I'm really gearing on the not, but um, that's the consistent conflict that I, that I find myself uh, pondering, I guess. Sure. Sure, I can certainly understand that. Now, if someone out there is listening, they want to get a hold of you or, you know, check out what you're doing for training or, or, or anything like that. You know, this is kind of what we call our commercial time. Right. You know, I, don't know, I don't know if you teach seminars or... I do. You know, okay, I do. Oh, tell us about yeah. all that stuff. Well, um, I, I've been really blessed with that to, to be recognized. And that's what I really feel that it is, it's being recognized for, uh, my experiences and, um, what I've been able to get out of going to all these different places and being able to really see it, um, firsthand. So anytime I do do a training, I, I, I'm very grateful for being able to share that, not necessarily teach it. Like to me, everybody for the most part knows how to kick and punch. You have kids that are coming up that have to make these adjustments in order to do it better. But for the most part, you know, the basics, the foundation, especially if you're training at the higher level, you pretty much know how to do that. It's those experiences that you're really trying to get a, um, a feel for and me being able to do that, um, and give that and share that. Because like I said, I, if not for the village that has um, been able to help me um, get to where I want to be, be, put me in a position to where I can make the decision to, okay, I'm going to go here to compete. I'm going to go there to train. Um, I, I really would not have been able to accomplish it. So I, I really believe in paying it forward. Uh, so I, I share my experiences with, um, you know, lo local dojos, um, within the United States who, who have, you know, asked me to come and, and really, and really do that. And I, um, I have one in January in California with Mary Crawford, who consistently, you know, every year, sometimes twice a year, who, who has asked me to, to come to her dojo, um, Okaigan. Um, my first, um, experience, um, somebody asking me was DC Sensei Williams. I mean, I mean, it was the first person who was like, you're, you're, you have something you're, you know what, you come to my dojo and I'm going to, um, pay you for your knowledge. Um, and I'm like, what? Like it just, you know, it was just totally weird to me. And I'm like, you really, you want me to come to your dojo and really, you know, show your kids what I know, like I know stuff. And, um, he's like, absolutely share that. Um, and then for me to go to, um, you know, Chicago and I consistently am going to Chicago. Um, and that's one person, that's one group I forgot to, to really mention, um, and was able to, you know, train with them and, and be with them and not necessarily teach, but just be able to just feed, feed off of each other. Um, I mean, there's been so many daughters that have been able to ask me to go. Um, I'm going to Texas. I'm, I'm planning on going to Texas again and, and Killeen, Texas with Sheehan Jackson. Um, I've gone to Atlanta. I've gone to, um, I mean, I, I can't, um, Brian Hobson's dojo in, in Virginia. Um, I've just been blessed to be asked, but the, the ones that are going to be most recent are going to be Mary, um, Crawford's, um, dojo in San Francisco, um, in January, the first weekend in January, uh, I'll be there. All right. I'm not quite sure if this is going to get out before then, but Oh, that's the fine. takeaway is that you offer seminars. Now, if somebody wants to talk to you about having one at their school, how would they get a hold of you? Uh, you can call me. Um, I'm pretty um, open and, and grateful for those who feel like, um, you know, they want to hear what my experience is. Uh, you can call me at 7186. Uh, I keep giving my work number. Sorry. 718-926-2468. Um, my email 
is um, smurfy1017 at uh, gmail.com. So it's smurfy1017. I'm also on Facebook. I have an athlete's page, Cheryl Murphy. And I also have um, my regular page, Cheryl K. Murphy. Um, and you can find me um, on there. And if you wanted to go to find, um, you know, who I am and, you know, what I do and um, the experiences that I've had, you can go to YouTube and put in Cheryl Murphy Karate. Um, and you'll see a lot of my fights on there as well, just to get a, a feel of um, what I have to offer. Um, and, you know, that's, that's pretty much it. Okay, great. How about some parting words of wisdom for the people listening? Parting words of wisdom. Um, I would say, you know, one, with anything that you do, it is your journey. Um, and to, you know, make your own history. Um, I think it's really, really important that you set your own goals. Um, definitely, you know, use people's other people's experiences and advice and you can kind of hear what they went through in maybe the same situation. But when it all comes down to it, it's your journey, it's your decision, it's what you want to do and you want to have any regrets in what you're doing. Um, so if that's opening up a dojo, if that is um, going to compete at 70 years old, like my sensei does, if it's, um, and I'm like freaking out myself, but if it's, um, let's say we're the same age, if you decided to want to go to, um, wanted to go and try to try out for the Olympics, then why not? Um, and I say that kind of talking to myself as well, but, (laughs) um, you know, I, I just feel like it's your journey. It's your decision. It's, and you don't want to be in a position of regret. So however long it may take, um, to get to where you want to go, it's only time and um, let's, you know, live it to the to the best. Um, and I think that that with anything of what whether it's karate, whether it's life, that's definitely something to just to strive for and live by. It's hard not to feel revved up when you hear Sensei Murphy speak. I've had the chance to see some of her sparring videos and I really hope you check them out. She's every bit as energetic in her sparring as she was here today. Thank you, Sensei Murphy, for your time on the show. Over at WhistlekickMartialArtsRadio.com, you can find the show notes with links to Sensei Murphy's social media links, her profile on the USA Olympic page, and a lot more. You can follow us on social media. We're on Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, YouTube, and Instagram, and our username is, you guessed it, Whistlekick. You should also check out our Facebook group, Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio, behind the scenes. We're always open to new guests for the show, so if you want to come on or recommend somebody else, maybe your instructor, someone you know that has some great stories, Head to the website, whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. You're probably noticing a pattern here. That's your hub for everything about this show. If you have any feedback, there's a place over there to submit that as well. If you like the show, make sure you're subscribing to whatever podcast app you use. If you're up for giving something back, maybe sharing the show with a friend, leaving us a review, signing up for the newsletter, getting in on that Facebook group, you could like us on Facebook, you could make a purchase. You know, There's a lot of ways to help us out help keep this show going, help keep Whistlekick going. You know, really, it's it's all about growing the martial arts community and giving something back and, and building some synergy among all of us. And if you've been listening to the show for a while, you know how important that is to me personally. Make sure you visit whistlekick.com before the next episode. That's actually going to be your homework, right? Check out everything we've got going there. If you're a school owner or a team coach, we've got wholesale.whistlekick.com with all of our sparring gear available at Wholesale Bulk Prices. Until next time, train hard, smile, have a great day.